My name is Carl Anderson. I'm a wildlife biologist with Biodiversity Research Institute. My coworkers Jonathan Feely, Kate Williams, Evan Adams, and I are here on Grindstone Island in upstate New York. It's the spring of 2012, and this is our second field season on the island. We're here capturing and banding migrating bats and birds to find out how many of these animals use grindstone and islands like it in the region as stopover habitat on their journeys to and from their breeding grounds. Biologists Evan Adams and Kate Williams are staffing the bird nets and banding station for the start of spring migration. They've set 19 mist nets in a variety of habitat types on the north central side of the island, attempting to capture as many different bird species as possible. Mist nets are fine mesh nets sized and colored so they're difficult to see and located in areas that birds want to move through. Birds hit the nets, get tangled in the mesh, then simply wait till the bird crew comes along on their regular net runs to free them. Once removed from the nets, the birds are brought back to the banding station where Kate and Evan identify each bird and band it with a U.S. Fish and Wildlife Lake band. They also record a series of representative measurements which help them determine the bird's age, sex, and overall condition. When they've finished, each bird is released unharmed, though occasionally somewhat peeved, and flies off to continue its journey. So far this spring, Kate and Evan have banded over 400 individual birds. Each evening as the sun is setting on Grindstone and the bird crew is retiring for the night, biologist Jonathan Feely and I are just headed out for a night of bat capture. Like the bird crew, we also use mist nets to capture bats. But these nets are 30 feet high on a system of poles and pulleys to reach into the canopy where bats forage. They're stretched across narrow openings in the woods and along roadways and paths that bats use as travel corridors. Unlike the bird crew, we open the nets for three hours at sundown, close them through the middle of the night when bats are least active, then with wills of steel open them again for three hours before dawn. We're catching significantly fewer animals than the bird crew. In 40 nights of capture effort, we've caught three species and sadly only 10 individuals. One potential reason for the paucity of bats is a devastating disease known as white nose syndrome a cold-loving fungus that U.S. Fish and Wildlife estimates has been responsible for the death of over five and a half million bats. Having first been detected not far from our study site in upstate New York, it's feared that some bat species may face regional extinction due to the disease. If Jonathan and I faithfully execute our nightly net runs, that we're hopeful of catching more of the furry flying mammals on their journey northward. Very little is known about the routes, destinations, and stopover habitats used by migrating bats like this silver-haired bat we've just banded. This is one reason why banding the bats we capture is so important. Where do these migrating bats go? What routes do they take? These are the kinds of questions that we hope future capture, banding, and tracking efforts will answer. Both teams are also employing highly sensitive acoustic detectors to passively sample birds and bats as they fly overhead. With microphones mounted atop 30-foot poles, sophisticated electronics record audible bird song and ultrasonic bat calls. Later, these recordings will be processed with software that will pair each song or call with the species that uttered it, but not without some intervention by experienced analysts. This spring is the final season for grindstone fieldwork. The crews will be packing up their gear and heading home with lots of data to compile and a feeling of accomplishment for a well-executed study. Biodiversity Research Institute conducts wildlife research across the continent and increasingly across the globe. Night or day, in all weather and seasons, somewhere, a BRI biologist is on the job addressing emerging threats to the world's wildlife.